Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Live from Kabbalah. Uh, from between the two holy shrines, Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, and his brother Abu Fadl Abbas, uh, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon them. Uh, tonight, insha'Allah, we will discuss a topic which is some kind and some sort of undesired um, by many, if not all, of the people uh, in this world. However, when we think of um, the next stage uh, of this topic, uh, we can be assured that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy um, can be for the believers. Uh, but before we introduce the topic, let's welcome our very special guest, uh, Sayyid Ja'far al-Qazwini. Assalamu alaykum Sayyidina. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, uh, tonight Sayyidina, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's, it's an undesired topic, the topic of death. And in the he and the hereafter, um, death, um, if we can say, is unchangeable. It's irresistible. And at the same time, no one can um, tamper with it. Even Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Holy Quran, <clears throat> every soul will experience the taste of death, and then we uh, we test you with both bad and good by way of trial, and to us you shall return. It's very significant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this verse uh, because we see death and everybody sees death um, as a way of ending something. But to the believers and especially the followers of it, it's, they, just, the uh, it's, it's just the start, as, as we mentioned. So it's just the beginning of the way. Um, how does Islam and specifically the Quran, the Holy Quran, address death? Ahsan, ahsan. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليك يا سيدي يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار يا ريتني كنت معكم فأفوز معكم فوزا عظيما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يتوفاكم ملك الموت الذي وكل بكم ثم إلى ربكم ترجعون صدق الله العلي العظيم Indeed my dear brother as you mentioned uh, the topic cannot be sugar coated it is uh, and also it is very important for us uh, to not forget this matter actually it is the most important thing that we should never uh, forget and we should always remind ourselves that the angel of death, Israel alayhi salam, will leave absolutely no one alive. Everyone will die. Eventually, no matter how long, how long our life will be, how strong we will be, definitely there will be a day that the angel of death and death will approach us. Mm -hmm. The approach of death. This matter is uh, what we shall never forget. Uh, and of course, after the, the, the angel of death, Malik al Maut, takes out uh, and takes all the lives away, and everyone is dead, it is only him. And Wajhul Rabbika Dul Jalal wal Ikram. And then Allah tells him to die, He orders him to die. Yaqulu lahu mut. He orders him to die and he dies. The one only. The only one that uh, that is immune, that is that will not die. And anyone else is uh, not immune from uh, death and the approach of it. Uh, also, there's another verse in the Holy Quran that says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفَرُّونَ مِنْهِ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدَّوْنَ إِلَىٰ عَالَمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنْبِئُكُمْ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Say that death which you flee will surely meet you, and then you'll be returned unto him who knows the unseen and the seen, and he will inform you of what you had been doing. Therefore, a wise person would never forget uh, death would always be thinking about it and be ready 
uh, and if not, if I'm not ready until now, then I should, uh, I better start getting ready for the infinite life, for the life that we're gonna be live, that the, for the life, for the infinite life that we are going to to live after our death. In this world, this world is basically uh, a bridge from this life, to, from this uh, limited life, from this uh, life that is going to end, to the infinite life. In this life, uh, we have to always keep memorizing ourselves that we are in a test that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has put us here, and we are in a test and we have to uh, do well and every single movement of ours is being recorded recorded uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take us back to him uh, he will judge us in the day of judgment on the day of judgment we will all be judged for our actions and deeds and there is no room to deny uh, something that we have done because in case we do that they will play back the exact scene and exactly what we did on the on the exact timing that that that, that, occurred, that action occurred. So there is no denying. Everything is being recorded, and we will return to Allah, and He will judge us on the day of judgment. في يوم في يوم كان مقداره خمسين ألف سنة. He will judge us in a day that will last fifty thousand years. It will feel like it lasts. It lasted fifty thousand years, and and also we have in a lot of narrations uh, that state that uh, uh, for the believers, for the mu'mins, uh, for the people who Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has forgiven and will uh, grant uh, paradise, uh, it will last as long as a prayer takes. For example, Salat al dhuhr the prayer, the noon prayer, or the afternoon, prayer, or even the morning prayer, um, two minutes, three minutes, four, five minutes max. For the believers, uh, it will last maybe five minutes. It will feel like it lasted five minutes. And for other people, uh, they will feel like it lasted 50,000 years as the Quran mentions and states. <coughs> and that's because all of the, all of the horror that they're gonna uh, see on that day. Uh, Harun al-Rashid, the, uh, the, the Abbasi king, when he was about to die, when he was on his deathbed, there was, historians say that there was 1,000 doctors around him on that day, Muslims and non-Muslims, but the doctors basically. Doctors from all around the world, from all around the kingdom, uh, they were there. But uh, when they eventually gave him the, uh, the, 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 the info that there is nothing that we can do for you, this is death, you are dying. And after he uh, he believed that there is nothing he, that he could do, he he kept on repeating ma agna anni maliya, dhab anni sultaniya. What did my my money couldn't do anything for me? Yeah. My money can't do the the millions or the billions that I have can't do anything for me. My kingdom, all these doctors, one thousand doctors uh, around me, and there is no one that can stop death from approaching or the can stop medical moat and also uh, we have a lot of uh, I mean we see we see people die every day uh, there is no room for us to believe that uh, we might not, might not die everyone will it's interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, Nuh uh, peace be upon him Prophet Nuh that lived uh, around, historians say, around 1950 years, 1950 years. Uh, when the angel of death uh, came to him, Nuh told him that, uh, oh, uh, do I have time to take a shower and change my clothes? He said, no, there is no time for that. I mean, come on, I have been a messenger for the past 1,000 years and uh, I have lived for almost 2,000 years and now I don't have that 15 minutes that I'm asking for. So later, uh, in the end, he asked them, uh, can I just move from the sun to the shade? 
So he agreed on that. Yeah, you can move from the sun to the shade. And uh, Jibreel and uh, Israel, the, the death angel, asked him, how did this 1950 years uh, pass by? How did it go? He said that it felt exactly uh, like uh, when I moved from the sun to the shade. It was just, I mean, almost 2,000 years. It was just a snapshot. Uh, and it, it ended so quickly that I feel like it, it was it lasted the same, uh, it took the same duration of time that, I, that took me to move from the sun to the shade. Uh, but uh, at the same time, nowadays and every time uh, throughout history, we have had a lot of people that uh, don't see that possible. I mean, they, they wonder, how is it possible? How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, re, recollect us? I mean, this flesh of mine, my bones, they're all going to be vanished. Mm -hmm. I mean, the flesh takes maybe weeks after someone dies. Maybe after I die of weeks, my flesh will be gone. My flesh will be gone. And uh, my bones take um, some years. And they will also vanish. And they will uh, go back to to its origin, as they're going to change uh, um, to, to dirt. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about billions of people all around the universe, all around the world dying. Uh, some have been dead for thousands, maybe millions of years, maybe mm -hmm. a million. So it is not possible to get them back. So this whole thing is a big lie. We will not be uh, recreated we will not uh, come back to life again. It is just impossible. And we're not talking about few people thinking this way. We're talking about, these days, we're talking about millions of people that just cannot understand the fact that uh, they will be recreated and uh, reborn uh, for the Day of Judgment and for being judged. Therefore, they say that, okay, I can do whatever I want in this life and I'm just going to be living this life and there will be no life after death mm -hmm. and it's the end of the story. Uh, so let me just feel free doing whatever I want to yeah, do. They, they, they can <coughs> <coughs> so as I said, they think that is, uh, the, the story is, uh, is just a big lie. But uh, it is not. How can we convince them? How can we, we talk about, uh, uh, about this matter? Uh, the, the carriers of this idea, how can we convince them that this is uh, not correct? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers this question in the Holy Quran. Uh, in many occasions, He has spoken through His Prophet, peace be upon Him, to them. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمُ قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم. And he has given us examples and forgot his own creation. <coughs> he says, who can quicken, uh, who can quicken these bones uh, when they are decayed? Say, O oh Prophet Muhammad, say he who created them the first time. So the answer to this question uh, is basically uh, that this, that we have to believe in the unseen. It is just not, uh, it is not just what we can see that exists. A lot of things in this universe uh, we cannot see, we cannot sense, but are existing. For example, this air that we are uh, taking the oxygen off right now, we can't see this air. But if I ask you, how can you prove that this place is filled, this room is filled with air? You tell me that you have to move your hand and you will touch it, you will sense it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us five senses, as everyone knows. Four of them are in the head and one in the whole body. The, the sense of, of seeing and hearing and smelling and tasting. And the last thing is, is uh, the sense of touching. But does 
does that mean that if I cannot notice something with this five tools and equipment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me, that means that it doesn't exist? No, uh, not necessarily. And no, it's not like that. The jinnies, the devils, uh, they're all creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're there. And everyone knows that they're there. And they're mentioned in the Holy Quran and they're mentioned in the um, 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 everywhere. But, and they cannot be seen. But we have to believe in them. If we can't notice something, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. For example, I give you an example. I, uh, if I go to sleep now in my room, I wake up in the morning, I see some food on the table. Uh, am I gonna... Um, obviously, obviously, someone has put it there. But I didn't see that someone that put the table, that they put uh, put the food on the table. Uh, but does that mean that the food walked by itself and got on the table? Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. exactly. Definitely, there's someone. The, there's a cause. There's someone that put that that food on the table. It's just me that I was sleeping. I didn't notice it. Our brains, my dear brother, are limited. Mm -hmm. We are limited creatures. Uh, we cannot, we cannot uh, realize the unlimited. Our brain is, is like this cup of water. When I uh, put water inside this, this cup and it, and it fills, eventually it's going to float. It's going to come out. This is the capacity of this cup. I can't fill it with more water. And our brains are exactly the same. They, uh, we are limited, our brains are limited. They were created at a certain point of time. Uh, but before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created many other things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had been there, has always been there. So uh, I cannot remember, I cannot, I don't know, do I know what took place before I was, I was created? No, I don't. And that's normal because 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created me this way and he made me limited and I know whatever I sense and as a believer I also have to believe and understand that the same creature uh, the same creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that created me the first time that gave me this brain that gave me this body the same creator of this universe that exists and is unlimited mm -hmm. and that I cannot realize uh, and recognize him in detail he has told me that I have to believe in certain things mm -hmm. even though I don't know him even though I haven't seen him even though I can't sense it right now I, uh, after people die I can't see what happens to them but I know that they are being asked in the grave and on the day of judgment and before that في عالم البرزخ in the hereafter from the time that everyone dies until the day of judgment we have a middle life over there uh, where are we going to be? Uh, Allah knows and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us tips snapshots if you are good you're going to be uh, living good after death and if I was bad Allah, then um, I will be hardly judged and, uh, and punished mm -hmm. for being bad, for my bad deeds and actions. So I again say that I don't necessarily have to see that to believe it. And the reason is because the same uh, unlimited creator of, uh, creator of us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me to believe that mm -hmm. and I am just, um, this is an obligation uh, that I have to, to surrender for, that I have to believe in. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying and telling me that I created you and you belong to me. Mm -hmm. I bring death upon you whenever I want and I bring you back to life as I did the first time at the first place yeah. where were we before uh, we were born where were we before uh, we were created we were nowhere we didn't exist so exactly like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-bari 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a difference between al-khaliq wal bari'. The difference is that, for example, uh, Jesus, Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, uh, he created, the Quran says that he could make uh, um, um, a bird out of mud and he would uh, uh, blow in it yeah. and it would b become a bird. That's creation. That's creating right there. But the difference is that what he did, what he did was uh, was a part of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. Well, he Allah didn't Allah. ascend. He didn't start that at the first place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started us out of nothing. Out of nothing he created us. But Jesus, for example, when he uh, did what's called creation, uh, that was that was uh, that was a part of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did and that was by the power of that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Jesus access states, even Jesus states um, that when he resurrected the people or when he um, uh, made the blind seeing Ascent. and when he uh, cured the ill he after that he said all of this is done by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's significant that, that it's interesting how you mention it indeed indeed yeah. it is uh, so, uh, when I realized that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is capable, was capable of creating me and everything else in this huge, enormous uh, universe, I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also capable of, of uh, bringing me back. And uh, in the seerah, in the history of Prophet, peace be upon him, and Ahlul Bayt, there are so many incidents. In the Holy Quran itself, the story uh, of of, uh, uh, of the four birds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered to, to, to have them uh, all minds together and put every uh, every piece on a mountain, on the top of the mountain, and they call them and look how they're going to be recreated and reconnected and, re and rebuilt and recreate it and they will come back to you. And also there's a very beautiful story in the Holy Quran of a, I believe a prophet uh, that was called Aziz. Uh, this person, this I believe prophet, some say he was a prophet, Aziz, Aziz not Isaiah. Aziz? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, some say that he uh, was a prophet and some others say that he was a good man like Luqman. Mm -hmm. He walked in, he was uh, in a road trip, he was uh, traveling. He walked in into a village. A village that uh, there had been a battle and uh, everyone uh, had been killed. Everyone had been killed and burned. There was absolutely uh, no life in that village except some crushed bones and skeletons of people that had uh, been dead for for maybe a year when he walked in that village so he he was riding a donkey and he had some food along with him uh, he looked at that village he looked at that scene and uh, and wondered how is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gonna, gonna restaurant, uh, restaurant uh, uh, everyone in this village? I mean, there's absolute silence. There is absolutely no life and they're all dead and their flesh is turned to dirt. How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gonna, gonna recreate them and resend them? And because his question was out of curiosity, wasn't out of denial, he wasn't denying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can. He was just wondering that how is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gonna do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to show him. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his life away. He dropped it, him and his ride, the donkey that I was riding. And he stayed dead for 100 years. After a hundred years, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him back to life. 
So, and I say prophet because uh, because uh, we have in the narration that it says, and also in the Holy Quran, that he was asked by the angels of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that uh, how long uh, have you been here? He said that I've been here for a day or some hours. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, they say that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala took his life uh, sometime in the morning and gave back life to him after sunset, sometime at 100 years later after sunset. So he was asked, how long have you been here? He said that I have been here for a day or less than that. They, uh, or, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him the message that, okay, take a look at your donkey. He looked at the scene. He looked at the, at the donkey that was dead and there was nothing left of it but some bones and skeleton and the flesh had been gone everything had been gone he realized that it's been way longer than a single day that has been here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that uh, you have been dead for the past 100 years and the proof is your donkey and now take a look at your food He's, he, he, he saw his food, he looked at his food, he had some, some grapes and some dates and something to drink, some, some kind of juice, some yogurt drink uh, he had with him. And he looked at his, at, at his food and it was so fresh. Nothing had, had, uh, had happened to it. It wasn't rotten and it wasn't spoiled. And the food was there, but his donkey was, was in that. Uh, um, um, exactly so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala later on uh, told him that okay uh, now I want you to take to to look at the donkey mm -hmm. he was of course shocked and what shocked him even more is is that he, he started watching and seeing that donkey he started seeing uh, the crushed bones and a skeleton getting all together again getting its color back and then he saw the dirt rising from the ground and coming and covering those bones and then he witnessed the transfer of dirt to flesh uh, and then the color started uh, start looking exactly like a flesh and then he starts seeing the hair growing and that maybe that took a couple of minutes only that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, made this quick for him to see and to witness this and um, he saw the hair growing again on that flesh and there was his donkey just like it had been, di it had been dead for, for half an hour only and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the donkey to get back to life to come back to life and the donkey was alive again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he was asked قال بل لبثت مائة عاما فانظر إلى طعامك وشرابك لم يتسنه it hasn't changed, it hasn't become rotten, it hasn't spoiled وانظر إلى حمارك ولنجعلك آية للناس وانظر إلى العظام كيف ننشزها ثم نكسوها لحما فلما تبين له قال أعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير uh, after he witnessed that, after he saw that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought that fact mm -hmm. and that scene to his eye, to, to one of his senses, and to, to his senses. He saw that, he heard that, he, he witnessed that. So after that, he said, أَعْلَمُ عِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ عِلْمَ الْمُشَاهَدَ Now I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of recreating us whenever he wants and taking us back to him whenever he wants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that uh, you saw this, you witnessed this, so now you go and speak to, to who doesn't believe in that mm -hmm. and tell them uh, what happened with you. Uh, and there are so many other stories 
uh, that inshallah we will uh, speak about him tomorrow inshallah or in the next episode inshallah I'll give you inshallah tomorrow if you were alive I'll give you some snapshots about the day of judgment and uh, before and after people are divided into two sections and two sectors uh, some to paradise and, um, and some to, to hellfire mm -hmm. but it's also significant to note when relating to death um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, states in the Holy Quran that uh, the purpose behind um, giving life to people and creating people is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only for worship but when we think of death and when, when you know if you will the expire date is, uh, is near um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tends to warn people but at the same time he tends to give a bright side exactly. to death and, uh, and, and uh, don't yeah. lose hope exactly yeah. that, so that, but that's don't be don't be be ready uh, and uh, be afraid of that day because it's going to be a hard day on everyone. Uh, but but after the day of judgment, it's infinite pleasure that uh, that's going to be, inshallah, for, for us, dear brother. Inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the same time, um, he says in the Quran, um, Surah Al Takathar, Al Hakum Al Takathar, Hatta Zartum Al Maqabir, you know, multiplying and multiplicity. Has um, you know has led you away from thinking of death Ahsan. until you visited the graves. Um, even Ahl al Bayt peace be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi, um, he says, and narration states that uh, once a, a graveyard or cemetery should be in the middle of the city. When we go to Najaf, um, we see uh, the cemetery and the graveyard right in the middle of the city. That's mustahab. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, mustahab. Because it's, it's not there for, for no purpose. It's there to remind people every day that this, this is where we can be. Uh, exactly. One time, one time um, we went to Najaf and uh, there was uh, a scholar with us. And uh, when he looked at the graveyard, um, he just stood there. We were walking, he just stood there. As uh, he, he, we asked him, why did you stand? He said, because it's, it's weird. You know, us people, when we tend to see such the, such a, such a scenery, uh, we tend to pause and think about it. Are we ready to be in that place? Are we ready to be in, in a place? And do we have enough good deeds for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala not to overlook our bad deeds, but to forgive us? Inshallah. It's it's significant to note. Um, but for as as of death, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, states in the Holy Quran, "Musabiqun um, sabiqun those who um, hasten to good deeds and rush to good deeds, ulaikal muqarrabun. There are the, the near ones. The fi jannat al naim, and they live in in paradise. Uh, and the opposite side, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tends to give us um, a scary picture, if you will, of hell. But uh, as scholars say, um, those verses are only there to warn people not to scare them away from religion. Some people, they tend to misunderstand that part and think of that religion is only talking about death. And there, there's a lot of verses in the Quran that talk about death and the hereafter. Because it's a fact, dear brother. It because is. It's a fact. I mean, whether, whether I'm a Muslim or now I'm not a Muslim, whether, whether I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't. Death will approach me and the day of judgment is gonna be there for me. Yeah. So the, 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 the reminders that we have in the Holy Quran, indeed, as you say, as you said, and as a lot of uh, narrations state that the believers, the mu'mineen, as salihin as shuhada uh, it will be so easy on them. Yeah. It will be very easy on them. But it is going to be there, whether yeah. it's going to be easy or hard. It is going to be there, and we have to be prepared for it. Definitely. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't forget that. Uh, وَغَدًا حِسَابٌ وَلَا عَمَلٌ Today uh, is only actions and there is no judging. And tomorrow is going to be judging and there's going to be no actions, no, no actions. deeds. One time uh, Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, was, uh, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, why do you tend to, um, he's not questioning 
the, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he tends to wonder that why does he warn the believers and give hope for the disbelievers? He said, because when I warn the believers, they tend to come closer to me and they tend to worship me more. But when I give <laughs> hope, <laughs> yeah, and then when I give hope to the, the disbelievers, they tend to, uh, you know, they tend to repent and ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's actually significant to, to, to think of death uh, as a means of uh, transaction from this life into hereafter. But uh, we tend to see a lot of people um, before they die, uh, they have some sort of, um, if you will, they get very, very sick. Or they tend to, you know, it's a sort of punishment. Some people would say from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but 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 it's not the reality. It's not because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, um, He puts illness into you know an, an old person, so He can take away. He so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can forgive him for the sins that he's done or something Ahsan. that he committed in his and life. If, and if I am ill, if I need an, uh, an operation, for example, a surgery. Uh, whether I like it or I don't, for example, if there's a bullet, a bullet in my body, whether I like it or I don't, whether I feel sick or I don't, the bullet has to be taken out. It's yeah. a fact. And death as well, and the hereafter, and the life after death as well, is, is, uh, as you mentioned, my dear brother, is a fact. And uh, also whether I, I feel sick thinking about it or I don't, the matter and the important point is that we shall be ready for it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Ahlul Bayt also narrate that it's significant for the believers um, to, you know, to reserve a spot in a specific cemetery, especially in Najaf, Wadi Salam, um, for them, you know, just to remind themselves about uh, about death. And even scholars in Najaf, um, a lot of uh, people. Um, narrate and they tell stories about them seeing scholars um, sitting and they, they have reserved a grave they sit in the grave and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Rabbi they, 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 they begin re reciting Quran and then in the end they say Rabbi Rja'oon la'alli ya'malu salihan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, give me back life so I can go back mm -hmm. and do good deeds. They live that situation yeah. before it, it happens. Yeah. Before it happens, so that they they are used to it. Yeah, some so kind, of some, some sort of. Yeah. And even in the hereafter, um, <coughs> Munkar and Nakir, the two angels that come to, to to the death person, they begin asking them, especially the believers of Ahlul Bayt. Um, that's why they say, Mama um, Sadiq, I believe, says um, when the adhan is recited always recite to it or listen to it so when it comes time when it comes time for you death you can um, uh, so you can recite the shahadatain an la ilaha illallah wa muhammad rasulullah and significant to actually listen to the adhan because when it comes down to death and you're in the grave and one can nakir come to you they tend to ask you questions and it's mandatory in everyone scholars or no scholar sinner or no sinner you know, a pious person or not, um, they ask the same questions, who is your God, who is your prophet, who is your Imam, the 12 Imams, and whoever hesitates, he tends to have a long life in, the, <coughs> uh, in, in that mental stage as yeah. you mentioned. It's but the person who hastens with the answer and says it right away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's, 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 it's noticed that that person has lived a pious life, a righteous life. Uh, but inshallah, as you mentioned, we can um, discuss definitely, uh, definitely. this inshallah topic. The next this topic episode, is very, it's, it's very depth. Inshallah, uh, but inshallah, indeed, we can uh, uh, spend some time tomorrow and to discuss it in the next episode. Um, so, respected definitely viewers, uh, thank you very much for tuning in, um, and thank you, Sayyid uh, Jafar, for uh, for thank attending you. tonight. Uh, stay n uh, tuned for the next episode, and for the dear viewers who didn't get the chance to view the previous episodes. Uh, they can log on to our YouTube channel, Adam Hussain uh, 3TV, uh, to check out the uploads, the Quranic uploads, and uh, the Ramadan lecture series, as well as live from Karbala. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa alaikum sayyidina. Wa alaikum insha'Allah. Wa alaikum insha'Allah. Wa alaikum insha'Allah. Wa alaikum insha'Allah.